fly fishing for bonefish attracts tourism and brings in major economic benefits to the Pacific Islands where this popular fish can be found. Anglers applying the catch and release principle are keen to return the bonefish to the wild with the best possible chance of survival. The SPC is helping regional countries to introduce effective, sustainable resource management plans. It is also promoting appropriate and easy to use catch handling techniques to increase fish survival prospects. Before going fishing, anglers need to be aware of local rules and traditions to avoid straying into customary or provincial reserves. It is also preferable to hire an accredited local fishing guide. The use of barbless hooks is recommended to make it easier to remove the hook and avoid damaging the fish's mouth. When a fish bites, the time spent fighting it should be as short as possible to minimise fatigue and stress for the fish. This will help in releasing it unharmed. Another advantage is that a short fight is less likely to attract predators like sharks and barracudas. The bonefish's shape and mucus-covered skin make it difficult to get a firm grip on it. Our advice is to use a triangular scoop net made from non-abrasive plastic in order to net the fish quickly without damaging it. At the end of the fight, when the bonefish has been reeled in close to the angler, the guide takes hold of the leader so as to get the fish into the scoop net. Once it's inside, the guide keeps the fish's head under the surface by ensuring that the scoop net itself remains underwater. The hook can then rapidly be removed with pliers. If the fish has swallowed the hook deeply, long nose pliers should be used. When the fish seems stressed, or if the fight has gone on longer than anticipated, it must be allowed to recover for a while in the scoop net before being released directly from it. The use of the scoop net limits direct contact between anglers and fish, avoiding damage to the mucus covering the skin. This mucus is a natural barrier against pathogenic bacteria and fungi. Anglers should be careful not to damage it when handling the fish. As with the previous bonefish, the guide hauls in the fish and directs it into the submerged scoop net, but this time the angler will immortalise his catch with a photo. After unhooking the fish and leaving it to recover for a while in the scoop net, the guide helps the angler to take hold of the fish. The angler should wet his gloves, crouching in the water facing the sun. In this way, the bonefish remains in constant contact with the water. Handling the fish for the photo should not take more than 30 seconds. And of course, you never touch the gills or the eyes. One photograph session will be enough. If other fish are caught during the trip, they should be released without taking a photo so as to reduce handling time as much as possible. Bone fish should be released back into shallow water where they are safe from predators. The fish should be helped to reoxygenate by gently holding its tail and underbelly while moving it backwards and forwards in the current. 
When it decides to swim off again, it should be accompanied to check that it is swimming properly. If there are predators around during the fight, the fishing spot must be changed. The fish can be measured and weighed by placing it in a wet cradle. Catch size measurement helps with population monitoring in the context of sustainable development of sport fishing tourism. To sum up, proper handling techniques increase bonefish survival chances. Anglers should use barbless hooks, making it possible to free the hook rapidly from the fish's mouth with as little injury as possible. As far as possible, the fight should be brief to reduce the fish's stress and avoid attracting predators. The use of a non-abrasive scoop net means the fight can be shortened and direct contact with the fish reduced to a minimum. It also means that the bonefish can be kept in a sheltered place to recover before it's released. A wet cradle is used to weigh the fish. If the angler wants to take a photo, he should wear wet gloves, keep the fish in contact with the water and not hold the fish for more than 30 seconds. If all this advice is followed, the impact of fly fishing on bonefish, a legendary catch for sport fishermen, will be reduced as much as it possibly can.